In this video, we're going to walk through how the daily attendance calculation function works for attendance records. I will start out by saying this video is used for training purposes only, that no real students or data are shown in this video, and any likeness to any real student is purely coincidental, as this is information in a sandbox server that is completely fake students and fake data. So one of the functions that we have inside of PowerSchool with our daily attendance rewrite that we have is found under a functions and it's this daily attendance calculation. So let's say that you want to, at the end of the week, go error check and make sure that no one is going against what we call our 51% rule in Alabama. So maybe there are some stragglers whose daily code is not matching the number of minutes on the meeting code that would constitute an absence or a present or a tardy code. Here's how you can check them in math. So the first thing you would want to do is have a student selection. So if I wanted to, I could select my whole school at one time. I could search a grade level. I could search just a group of kids by hand if I wanted to. In this case, I'm going to search all students. So it pulls up 1,500 students at this high school. I am going to go to attendance and go to daily attendance calculation. Now, one thing to note about this, once you have the student selected, is that you can only run this in two week intervals. And so that is one of the things why we say, you know, make it as a habit to check it, you know, once every Friday or every other Friday, since we can run it two weeks at a time to see, are there any missteps where that daily code needs to be recalculated? So I'm gonna use from today's date. So let's go to March 24. And I'm going to back it up just to March 1st, just to look at where we're at in March so far to see if I have any mismatches with my attendance records from maybe somebody accidentally hitting an override or doing some manual changes, thinking they were setting it correctly and didn't. So once I hit submit, it's going to load. And the larger the school and the wider the time frame, the longer it's going to take for this load to happen. So it could take 30 seconds or so, depending on the brevity of it. You're going to get a very long list of all the records and what you want to see is match on all of them. But also what you don't want to do is have to scroll through a bunch of matches to find any that might be a mismatch. So one of the little what we call hidden Easter eggs that we have in here is if you do have a very long list, this override, there is a hyperlinked H here that when you click on the H will hide any matches because you don't want to change any of that data. You only want to change anything that is mismatched. And so it tells me right here that I have two entries for Mickey Mouse where a previous daily code was none and the new daily code is ISS. So this could be a situation in which ISS wrote through all the periods of the day, but for some reason did not write to the daily side and this is catching it saying, oh, it's missed. We need to have that daily code of ISS over on the daily side as well. I've also seen many a times where it will catch a calculation where um, a person had put in a present for the daily side when it should have been a tardy because maybe a kid checked in 10 minutes late and they didn't update it or tried to override it. So this keeps them in compliance with our state rules of a tardy missing any point of the day with a check in or check out and um, presence being our ISS or alternative placement and then our absences being any time we have those percentages where they've missed more than 49% of the day. So if I do run this and I see that these two changes need to be made, or if you run it and see there's 30 changes that need to be made, we hope that it really isn't that much because we're getting more used to this new calculation. All you do is hit submit and it will make those corrections for you. So if I were to go check those days on Mickey Mouse, I will now see those ISS on the daily side. So just to show if I go into Mickey Mouse. And I go into his attendance overview. And just to show, and yes, this is our student that gets lots of information put on them. I can see that those are the ISS that were coded all through the meetings. So now I want to flip through that week on the daily side. And let's see if our ISS codes are there. And sure enough, if I come down here, now I have the ISS present codes there as well. So that is how you can find any mismatches and errors on your attendance that might need corrections. To give more examples, I just ran the calculation again, but this time used a different time period to show some different mismatches and codes that you could possibly see. So looking at this list of codes here, I can see again, kind of the same ISS code didn't get written. 
Over here, I can also see some mismatches between tardy codes. So in this case, it's telling me that the tardy code was tardy unexcused, and now it should be tardy excused. So we did have an update not too long ago where we are now matching against the absence code that is used over on the daily record or on the, excuse me, on the meeting record. So if I were to use doctor's excuse and they only miss in this case, 13% of the day in 42 minutes, not enough to be considered absence. Well, since doctor's excuse is an excusable absence code, you should be using an excusable tardy code. And so those are reverting if it did automatically go to your default code, which a lot of people said is tardy unexcused. Other things that you can see are things like this, where previously it says that they had a doctor's excuse, but overall they're supposed to have an unexcused absence. So if I were to go and look at those, it's going to tell me that there's more of an unexcused absence code or the meeting site has been updated, but the daily did not get updated once they did to that correct code. I also sometimes catch things like this, where someone has actually marked a student absent with the unexcused absence code, but according to our rules, they've not missed the 49% percent of the day and so they should not be considered absent they should be considered tardy instead and so it's really ones like this that are going to inadvertently contribute to your chronic absenteeism that we want to catch and have you be able to look at these so again different types of code combinations that could be off that you would need to look for that once you have all of these on a screen you could hit that submit button and it would correct all of those daily calculations at once for you